Okay, let's do some math for fun. Here we're going to solve this differential equation, and yes, the order right here is 6 because of the 6 derivative. However, this is actually not that bad because this is linear and also with constant coefficients. So seriously, it's not that bad. However, as always, please pause the video and try this first. Alright, hopefully you guys have a chance to try it, and now let's talk about how to solve this. Because this right here is a linear differential equation with constant coefficients, so we can just go ahead and find its characteristic equation and solve that, and we we'll go from there, right? Well, as a review, let me remind you guys, whenever we have a linear differential equation with constant coefficients, the solutions will be in the form of e to the rt. And uh, you should look at this as a building block, right? Because later on you have to multiply by constants. And you can differentiate this six times and put it back and all that stuff. And in the end, you end up with the equation r to the sixth power and then plus one. The y corresponds to one. And this is equal to zero. And we just have solved this. And yes, you can solve this by factoring and do some quadratic formula, but I'm going to leave that to you guys. However, be sure you find out both the real and also the complex solutions though. Anyway, for this one right here, I will actually show you guys how to use complex number to help us out. Because as you can see, of course, we can just minus one on both sides. So r to the sixth power is equal to negative one. And this is the approach, right? We will go to the complex world for this. Look at negative one in the complex world. So here is the complex plane. And if you would like to just draw a circle real quick, well, this right here is the real axis, and this is the imaginary axis, and negative 1 is right here. And of course, let's also look at the polar form of this. We need a distance which is 1, and then the angle from here to here is pi. So in other words, this is r, which is 1, and the r is for the distance. You can not this out. And then e to the i theta, which is the pi, just like that. So. The negative one in the complex world is e to the i pi. Yeah, kind of. Well, let me put this down right here for you guys first. We have now r to the sixth power equals e to the i pi. But the problem is that, is this the only angle to make this work? No, right? Because you can keep rotating every two pi, or maybe go backwards as well. So the truth is, right here, you have to look at the pi and add a multiple of 2 pi, so we put down 2 n pi or 2 pi n up to you. So this right here is the idea. So you may have pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, and so on. Sorry, pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, and so on. And also the backward situation. Anyway, right here, of course, you can just raise both sides to 1 over 6 power, and that will give us r is equal to this thing, which is just e to the i parentheses pi plus 2 n pi. But we divide this by 6 because we raise both sides to the six power, 1 over 6 power. So just like divide both sides by 6 for the exponent like that. Well, if you look at this right here, we will have a total of 6 solutions. For this to work, how you can do it is we have the n, right? The n will go from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that will give you the whole 6 solutions for that. So that's pretty much the idea. Well, before we continue, let me remind you guys one of the greatest formula ever. That's the Euler's formula. Namely, right? Namely, e to the i theta, that's equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta, right? So, we are going to put 0 into n, and look at that. This part will just be 0, so we just get e to the i pi over 6. And we will have to use this right here to calculate that for us. So, let me put this down right here for you guys. I will write this down as just R1. So, again, I will just put down 0 into the end. So, we have e to the pi over 6, like this. e to the i pi over 6. And then with this being done, and also the Euler's formula, just put it there. So, we have cosine of pi over 6, and then plus i sine pi over 6, and that's pretty much the idea. Now, this right here is square root of 3 over 2, and this right here will give us positive 1 half. So we have positive 1 half i, like this. Right, so that's pretty much it for the first uh, r, and then we just continue with the rest. Next, we're putting 1 right here. This right here will give us 3 pi divided by 
6, that would be pi over 2. So the next r is going to be e to the i pi over 2. And this is cosine of pi over 2 plus i sine of pi over 2. And this is actually really nice because this one is what? 0, and this right here is 1, so we have just i right here. That's very nice. And then r3, we're putting 2 in here, and that will give us 5 pi and over 6, and then the i, right? So we have e to the i, 5 pi over 6. And then we do the same thing, cosine of 5 pi over 6 plus i sine of 5 pi over 6, and now this right here is going to be on the second quadrant, so you should have uh, negative square root of 3 over 2, and then this right here will be still positive 1 half. So we have the plus 1 half i. So, as you can see, we found three solutions so far. And now, the best part is that you don't need to continue, because keep in mind, if we have a solution right here, and this is a complex solution, then its complex conjugate is also a solution. Namely, another solution will be square root of 3 over 2 minus 1 half i. Another solution is going to be negative i. Another solution is going to be negative square root of 3 over 2 minus 1 half i. That's pretty much it, right? But if you really want to just see it, you see if you're putting 3 right here, that will give you 7 pi over 6, and that will be down here. And that's just a reflection from here to here, right? And in fact, that's just a reflection of the complex conjugate of this. That's pretty much it. I will still put this down right here for you guys, though. r4 is equal to square, negative square root of 3 over 2 minus 1 half i. And then the other one is just r5, which is negative i. And then the last one is r6 is going to be square root of 3 over 2 minus 1 half i. That's pretty much the idea. Well, uh, you don't really have to do this if you are just trying to solve that differential equation. But if you are talking about how to solve this equation, of course you have to write down the whole six solutions. Anyway, here we go. After we have found all the r's, you remember the solutions has the form e to the rt. But every r right here is complex. So we have to know how to handle that situation. Then I will just you know, put another note for you guys. If I have done this before, so be sure you guys go check out my playlist, but I will do this for you guys again right here. All right, E, R is a complex number. Let's write it down as A plus BI. So we have E to the A plus BI here, then times T. And of course, from here we can distribute the T, so we get E to the AT plus, and this times that I will put on I first, so we have I VT. And then by rule of exponent, we can write this as e to the at times e to the ibt. This part is legit. It's real. Right? So we have to just write it down. But for this part, e to the ibt, notice that we will have to use the Euler's formula, with this right here being our angle theta. So we will just put this right here into here and here, and we will end up cosine of bt like this, and then add it with i sine of bt, like that. So that's pretty much the idea. And let's write down the solutions already, huh? So here we go. Let's say y right here. I'm going to look at this right here. And also it's complex conjugate, which is this one. And as you can see, the a is square root of 3 over 2. And let's just take out that first. Now we'll go right here. And look at, we will have to distribute this. So let's go ahead and do that right already. And it's going to give you guys two solutions. The first one is going to be e to the a, which is square root of 3 over 2, times t, like this, times cosine of bt. And our b is 1 half. So I'll put down 1 half t, like this. And you might be wondering, how come I didn't put down negative 1 half? Well, the idea is that if you have cosine of negative 1 half, because cosine is even, the negative doesn't matter. So that will be the explanation for that. So that's pretty much it for the first building block. And then the next one is going to be e to the a, which is again that, square root of 3 over 2, t. And we will multiply by sine of bt. And we will have the 1 half t right here. Two things. First, how come I didn't put on negative? Because it doesn't matter. 
because if you have a negative one half, you can take that out to the front. And the idea here is that they are just our building blocks. What we have to do next is that, in fact, we have to multiply this by a constant, let's say C1. Likewise, we multiply this by another constant, let's say C2. When you factor out the negative right here, well, C2 is a constant, negative C2 is also just a constant. So we will just keep it as C2 like this. Right? Another thing is that, how come I didn't put on I? Well, if you put on I right here, I is a constant, C2 is a constant, a constant times a constant is still another constant, so we are good. So that's pretty much the approach, and now we have two parts, and we have four more to go. Next, let's do this in blue, why not? We have the I, and let's also look at the negative I. And of course, we are just adding things up together. In this situation, A is zero, right, because it's zero plus one I, so A is zero, so you don't have the E part. You just have cosine of, and the B is one, so we have cosine, of 1t, which is just t, and then we also have sine of 1t, which is just t. Again, don't worry about the i or the negative whatsoever, because now we multiply this by a constant, c3, do it here as well, c4, and then add them up. That's the idea. And for the last one, I will do this in green. We are looking at this one and also this one. And seriously, you didn't have to find out O6 because once you have this three, you are good to go. Lastly, we have plus and uh, the A is negative. Square root of three over two T cosine of uh, one half T. And then the other part is E to the negative square root of three over two T sine of one half T. Well, in the end, as long as we put down C5 and C6 and add them up, we are done. That's it, right? So, as you can see, originally, we start with a really simple looking differential equation and then the answer is actually pretty long and all that stuff, right? Hopefully you guys all like this video. If you guys need more help with differential equations, be sure you guys go check out my playlist because I have a lot of videos for you guys already. Hopefully you guys all like this, and as always... That's it. Cheers.